is the sentinel of the vast coastlines and island territories of our nation? Who ensures that our trade at sea flows unhindered? Who secures the seas so that our lives throb and succeed on land? Who renders help at sea when nature unleashes its fury? Who watches over the deep blue to ensure a peaceful sleep for 1.25 billion Indians? A force that is hard to perform, equipped to dominate, inspired to hold sway by might and unparalleled courage. A force that is defined by the ethos of duty, honor, courage. The Indian Navy is a mighty manifestation of India's maritime power. It takes on the evolving multi-dimensional battle environment of today's naval warfare in both offensive and defensive operations. Any ocean, including the Indian Ocean, is a huge ocean and no maritime force or navy on its own can monitor the entire ocean or the global commons. Taking into account the situation in the northern Indian Ocean, especially in the Arabian Sea, it is very important that we build cooperative relationships with like-minded nations and navies to be able to have maritime domain awareness of the global commons. And here in collaborative relationships between navies and nations matter so that we can provide safe and secure sea lines of communications to all seafarers. The Indian Navy confronts a number of non-traditional maritime threats like terrorism, piracy, organized crime, as also climate change and natural disasters. Post 26-11 Mumbai terror attack, the Navy was given the overall responsibility of maritime security which included coastal security. We have made new standard operating procedures. The maritime police has been strengthened. We regularly exercise uh, with all the agencies along with the Coast Guard. Along with Coast Guard, the Navy has visited each and every fishing village on our coast, talked to the fishermen and made them as part of a coastal security construct and they act as a eyes and ears. And we are better prepared now. As far as the larger issue of maritime security, we have a ship on permanent deployment since October 2008 in the Gulf of Aden. We also now have a ship on deployment in the Andaman Sea and the Malacca Straits and in the Northern Arabian Sea and the northern part of the Bay of Bengal. So with these new deployments and the new processes put in place, I think our maritime zones are much more secure. The Navy's growing capabilities and enhanced operational footprint has allowed it to be the first responder in the event of a disaster in the region. 
and provide much needed succor to the affected populace. The Indian Navy's ability to mobilize rapidly in calamities and conflict situations doesn't just bring hope and ensure relief for our people. It lifts the spirit of the nation and wins the world's trust. We've changed our deployment philosophy to mission-based deployments where our maritime areas of interest are being kept under constant surveillance by deployment of ships, aircraft and submarines. And we have also looked at a refit to operational cycle and the transition from refit to operation cycle so that we have overall greater degree of combat readiness and availability of forces to meet our mandate in the maritime environment. With the rapidly evolving nature of threats, the Indian Navy is constantly updating its combat abilities to transform into a modern, agile, mobile and technology-driven force. From concept to combat, the Indian Navy is steeped in the spirit of Make in India. It has indigenously developed aircraft carrier, high-tech submarines, anti-submarine warfare corvette, water jet fast attack crafts, and the nation's first indigenous floating dock. My predecessors way back in the early 60s took a decision to be a builder's navy and not a buyer's navy. We started off with a small team of naval architects and now it has gone into a full-fledged naval design bureau manned by naval officers. Till date over 200 ships have been built in India and currently 34 ships and submarines are building or on order all on Indian shipyards. So the Make in India initiative by the Navy is nothing new. It's been started decades ago and we are following it through. And now the indigenous content on individual ships have also gone up. And the recently commissioned ASW Corvette INS Kiltan has over 90% indigenous content on board the ship. The entire steel required for ship and submarine construction is now made within India and other equipment and weapons and sensors are now also being made in India under the Make in India initiative. India's maritime forces are prepared for range and mobility to fulfill their responsibilities in the extended security horizon beyond their own shores. To tackle the full spectrum of challenges, from terrorism to strategic, in a technology-driven environment, the naval officers are trained in the Indian Naval Academy. The cradle of naval leadership, located on a roughly 10 square kilometer site, the Indian Naval Academy is the largest naval academy in Asia. Mandated to provide our nation with future leadership of the Indian Navy, this prestigious academy has state-of-the-art facilities to groom the Navy's future leaders. Today, the academy accepts up to 1,200 cadets for officer training each year. The INA aims to develop its trainees mentally, physically and morally. It also establishes bridges of friendship across the ocean by training personnel from friendly foreign countries. Our brave seamen are trained at Chilka, the boot camp institution that imparts ad initio training to all greenhorns.
imbibing in them the high ideals of loyalty, valor, and patriotism. Each year, the institution transforms around 5,000 raw recruits into sea warriors. Our marine commandos, the globally appreciated and respected Marcos, are primarily trained at the Indian naval ship INS Abhimanyu, the home base of this elite special operations unit of the Indian Navy. Considered among the finest special forces in the world, the Marcos stand true to their motto, the few, the fearless. They are competent and are trained and equipped to operate in all three mediums, sea, air and land. It's a regimen that provokes them to venture beyond the ordinary, tests the limits of their endurance and helps them develop nerves of steel. A tireless vanguard of India's foreign policy objectives, the Navy reaches out to forge partnerships with some of the best maritime powers of the world. Naval exercises like the trilateral Malabar exercise between the Indian Navy, the US Navy and the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force aim at achieving deeper military ties and critical maritime partnerships between global nations. The most recent 21st edition of the exercise involved the participation of around 16 warships, two submarines and scores of fighter jets, surveillance aircrafts and helicopters from all three countries. The Indian Navy joins forces with friendly nations from around the world to celebrate their moments of glory. India is a maritime nation. The oldest dry dock in the world is in India. The oldest navigation chart was produced in India. In the middle we forgot the importance of the seas. There has been a revival in India on the importance of the ocean and India's fundamental dependence on the ocean for economic growth and sustenance. So we are a maritime nation. This has been finally been realized. There is a focus on this through Sagar, which of the Honorable Prime Minister of Security and Growth for All, and the Sagar Mala project, which is looking at port and other infrastructure. So there has been a positive shift towards the maritime domain. And I'm sure this initiative will continue and we will ensure that the global commons and India's dependence on the ocean will be protected. In relishing adventure, seeking thrills and reaching for victory, the Indian Navy leads the way. On the 10th of September 2017, Six brave hearts from the Indian Navy set sail to create history. They will be battling rough seas on board INS V Tarani, an Indian built sailboat. These brave women are proud to be attempting something that most navies of the world would not even contemplate circumnavigate the globe in a sailboat. The expedition includes stopovers at Australia, New Zealand, the Falklands, and South Africa, a Herculean task fearlessly carried out by our seafaring women. The Indian Navy Mount Everest Expedition 2017 was themed Sagar Tal Se Sagar Mata. The expedition embodied the vision of the Indian Navy through its efforts to soar from the depths of the ocean to the highest peak of the world. Battling bad weather and harsh winds, through sheer grit and commitment, they summited Mount Everest and planted the ceremonial ice axe on the top of the world. 
The participation of naval personnel at national and international sporting events has also brought laurels and has been vital for developing leadership skills and esprit de corps. The immortal sacrifices of our gallant seamen become legends in naval chronicles and their families are honored with grief-laden pride. While the men stay away and awake, safeguarding our national integrity, their families remain a priority for the Navy. NAWA, or the Navy Wives Welfare Association, provides the much needed support to families when the men are toiling away at sea. Led by passion and commitment from the highest levels, the association today supplements the efforts of the Indian Navy in areas of community welfare and development all across the nation. At all times, steady on course to build all-round deterrence against any maritime threat. To decisively win in case of war and to shape the global maritime environment in favor of our nation. Navy is a multi-dimensional force. We have the ability to operate in the air, on the surface and below water. We are a networked force and we are proceeding towards cooperative engagement capability. And in the year to come, overall the Navy's combat effectiveness will be much more. Tech savvy, trained, the Indian Navy, assertive, alert, and awake for India. Combat ready to deter and defeat any misadventure. Whatever it takes, and wherever it takes them. Oh,